Hello, everyone. Peter Locke, I'm the IBPA Director of Membership and Member Services, and this is the Get to Know Your IBPA Member Benefits webinar series. We do this because we want everyone to see all the great benefits, and some of them are a little more complex than others, so we do it so you can see all the details of those benefits. Today, I'm excited we're doing the Twin Flame Studios Member Benefit, and I'm very happy to welcome Twin Flame Studios CEO and founder, Tina Dietz. Hello. Hi, Christopher. Thanks for having us. Thank you. I'm going to go, I'm going to disappear and I'll let you take over. Okay, got it. <laughs> oh, hi, everybody. I'm Tina Dietz. I'm the CEO and founder of Twin Flame Studios. Uh, I'm here today with my VP of Publishing and a strong right arm, Stephen George. Uh, some of you may uh, recognize Stephen from um, meetings that we've been to uh, or uh, Paul Stefano's and another, another one of our team members that you may uh, be familiar with. So our, our conversation with you is kind of multi-part today because at the end of the day, um, I am a longtime entrepreneur. I'm originally uh, a therapist. I grew up as an entrepreneur. I've had mul multiple businesses and I've grown many, many businesses in different countries uh, with people. So one of the things that's important to me and that we hold as a core value is being of high service to the folks that we're talking to. So if you want to share uh, in the chat, it doesn't have to go into the Q&A, but in the chat, um, anything that would make today super worthwhile for you to have shown up live and take your time to participate in, that's gonna be really helpful for us. Um, you, can, you can actually put it in the chat or the Q&A, we'll navigate it, it'll be fine. Um, so that's one thing that I'd really love for you to know, to know, and so we can be of high service. The other thing is that uh, I am going to move through um, a rather extensive slide deck that goes through everything you possibly wanted to know about audiobooks without getting into literal technical like settings for recording. <laughs> um, and I'm going to go through that like a, a fire hose quickly so that we can get to a Q&A session and talk about um, the member benefit and how we actually work with referral partners, how we work with um, publisher partners, which is quite unique in the industry and what we've what we've developed. Um, and so uh, I, just a little bit of background. Um, I started Twin Flame Studios out of a need that I saw in the market. I was a business coach. Most of my uh, clients, my friends, my colleagues, a lot of folks were starting to write books or actively writing books to um, increase their credibility, to get their name out there, to get speaking gigs, all different kinds of reasons. But nobody was talking about audiobooks. And I, as a paid hobby, uh, was voice acting on the side. And I took some master classes with an amazing man named Pat Fraley, who's trained many, many voice actors over decades. And he really opened my eyes, not only to audiobook narration, but to the industry in general. And so my business brain went, why the hell isn't anybody doing audiobooks? Now, this is going back into 2012. This is a long time ago, um, or what feels like a very long time ago. And my research kind of bore out that nobody at that time was actually serving independent or self-published authors in a non-traditional way. Everything was traditional publishing, and some of it was even a kind of predatory where we saw folks um, having authors pay to have their audiobook produced and losing the majority of their rights and royalties. So like any good entrepreneur, this annoyed the hell out of me. And uh, it was a couple of years later when uh, I had done a lot of pilot research and kind of uh, surveyed a lot of folks in the industry that decided to pilot services in this sector, um, specifically into uh, nonfiction. And that it was the, the basis of Twin Flame Studios. And since then, um, we have become the premier provider of nonfiction for those who want to remote record author narrated nonfiction books. And that is not all that we do, but that is one of the things that we do better, I would say better than anybody else in the world because we have basically worked on it. We were first to market with our processes and we have worked on it for basically 10 years to refine that process of remote recording. And now um, I'm happy to say, and this is the first that anybody is hearing this, this is my first public announcement of this, 
that we are moving into fiction into 2025 and are starting to take titles now for uh, request and submission for fiction audiobooks as we're moving to expand in, in that particular direction and utilizing some of the technology that we've developed over the years for remote recording to be able to do unique things like live duet recording, which means more than one narrator to really increase the uh, interest and the um, the profitability of these of these audiobooks and really what the market wants. The market is very interested in authentic expression is very interested in the storytelling aspects of things because let's face it when we read books we want to be informed but more we want to be entertained so that's a, a lot of what we do so i'm going to switch to my slides right now and then we'll come back to q a but please feel free as things go along to put questions into the q a i will try to move through um slides uh, relatively quickly. We will provide the slides afterwards and we also can are happy to provide access to, um, I know you'll have the recording here as well, but if you wanted a slightly slowed down version of this entire um, slide presentation, we have that as well. Um, wait one second, I just want to so uh, again, thank you so much for joining us live here today, for those of you who are joining us live, and, and thank you for taking the time for watching the recording as well. But I know that it's, it takes a lot to take an hour out of a busy day. Um, we're really here to make sure that you have a long lasting asset. You can, uh, the, the old saying goes, uh, there's three ways you can have things, fast, cheap, and good, pick two. And we're really on the side of having a lasting asset that you're going to be able to look back in 10 years and still be able to make royalties from that feels fresh that feels new that feels lasting that is an evergreen asset. And these are um, we are going to be covering why uh, audiobook publication is a good fit, um, we are going to talk about cost. We are definitely going to uh, talk about availability and how the distribution of audiobooks works, which is, of course, a bit different than how other forms of books work. And uh, boosting the bottom line and expanding your audience, of course, we'll leave lots of time for Q&A. And I just want you to know who you're talking to here is actually if everything I said before, but you're also talking to this kid. So I was a reading rainbow kid. I was on the show twice. Uh, when I was about uh, seven and nine years old. And it was a really interesting experience for me because I got to bring together two of my favorite things in the world, which are books and microphones. And I have been in love with books and I, since I was two years old, and it, it really has informed the decisions we've made as a company to nurture people's voices, to get them out into the world. Uh, and this was such an early experience of mine that continues to shape the way that I see the world. And um, no, I never got to meet LeVar Burton, but reading Rainbow and all of these things where we're talking about books and how books have made a difference in our lives and the lessons that we can learn from books is a constant conversation. I think all of us are in, in the publishing world. And I think it's important to connect back with that as a purpose. Um, so we have surveyed our 300 plus, actually it's 400 plus authors now, um, about what they had to say about why they're doing audiobooks. And this is pretty much in order of importance. Income stream, of course, extremely important. Uh, everyone wants to sell more books and audiobooks are certainly a way to do that and to, of course, reach a wider audience. Um, we'll talk about the popularity of audiobooks in just a moment and the numbers around that. It also raises your chances of being selected as a speaker. It, this is more, of course, the nonfiction world. Here's one of the funny stories about that. We find that this works to help people get more selected as speakers, even if they're not narrating their own audiobook. <laughs> that's, that's the wild thing. It's the fact of having a quality audiobook that has made the difference more than once uh, according to our authors, and even for those folks who have chosen not to narrate their own audiobook or not chosen not to narrate the whole thing on their own or split the the uh, the option, what we call a hybrid audiobook. 
Making work more accessible is particularly important in this day and age as we're trying to reach more people, include more people in our book experiences. And let's face it, audio is the most accessible form of media. You can listen when you can't read, you can listen when you can't watch. And uh, people are very often doing other things while they're listening to audio and having an integrated experience with an audio book. Legal, leaving a legacy actually showed up a lot for our authors and wanting to know that they were passing on their knowledge, their wisdom, their storytelling. And intimacy, um, you know, in addition to the work we do with audiobooks, a number of years ago, I had the pleasure of being the lead interviewer in a movie, a documentary called The Messengers, which was about the power of audio and specifically podcasting. But what we came up in more than 40 interviews with audio producers was that intimacy was something that their audiences cited as the reason they listened to audio. And we have this wild neurological connection when we're listening to audio, where quite literally someone is becoming a voice in our heads as we listen to them. So as an author, that's a tremendous privilege to, to be granting access to your voice or the voice of your story into somebody's brain that they'll that becomes a, a voice in their head because they're listening to an audiobook not for a 30 second reel but for four six eight ten twelve hours of audio and that becomes a relationship content marketing is a great thing we can do for audiobooks we're going to talk about some more practicalities of that in a few minutes and of course, you can make courses and products from audiobook content. So depending on the licensing that you have as a publisher or your relationship with your clients who are authors, or if you're an author yourself, this is something that often gets overlooked. Um, and happy to answer questions uh, on, on the nitty gritty about this after we touch on it further in a little bit. In 2023, there were over $2 billion in sales in the US. These are US numbers only. It is bigger worldwide and audiobooks worldwide often are listened to in English, uh, much like podcasting, audiobooks get used as a way for people to learn English or to further studies in English. Um, but of course, we do you can produce audiobooks in multiple other languages as well. But these numbers are just in the US alone. And for over 10 straight years now, uh, there has been double digit sales growth year after year after year. This has outpaced all other forms of publishing. Um, it, it, audiobooks in, I believe it was 2012, were a $500 million industry. Now they are a $2 billion industry. Tremendous growth. And, you know, we're still seeing growth year on year on year on year. And uh, we didn't uh, so much look at children here, but more than half of adult Americans listen to audiobooks at least monthly. And uh, children, of course, listen to a ton of audiobooks as well, whether that's through library applications or through YouTube or through other special applications. This is the weird part. I know that cost of audiobooks is a big topic. Happy to talk about it and parse it out with you. But the cost of audiobook production is actually considerably less than it used to be because we're delivering digitally rather than hard copy. For those of you who are as old as me, you can remember books on tape or um, the books on 45, the little children's books, or even multiple albums. The first audiobook was produced around 1930 uh, on vinyl. So these, this is a very durable format that people continue to always look for and want to have. Um, it's a very desirable product in the book world. So let's quickly go over some strategy. The best time to start an audiobook. Um, the best time to start an audiobook is actually during the first manuscript editing process. And that is through a process we call, and maybe you've heard of this, called an oral edit. All authors um, and possibly editors should be reading books out loud. You catch things that you would never catch with your eye or with technology when you read a book out loud. This also makes any book, fiction, nonfiction, doesn't matter, better by virtue of making the voices more authentic because we hear it in our heads as spoken word when we're reading a book uh, visually. Um, and then it also makes for a better audiobook down the road. So that's actually the best time to start 
thinking about or looking at an audiobook. And even if an audiobook never gets done, oral editing will make the final product of the book better, even if it's just to not have run on sentences or to have an author's voice more authentically displayed or to have dialogue presented in a way that makes more sense. But the best time to launch an audiobook is a different topic. We're a big fan of kind of the traditional launch of audiobooks where it's after some of the other versions, maybe ebook, paperback, and hardcover, and then audiobook. Um, there is, especially if you have a limited marketing budget, there's some great ways to re-engage audiences by doing this. So we like to do it that way. The other best time to launch an audiobook that we do a lot of is giving a book a second life, breathing new life into it. Um, and that can be a year, two years, three years after a book gets uh, published or even through a second edition of a book. So those are really the two strategically best places to launch an audiobook. Now, a timeline for audiobook has largely depends on author interaction or the uh, publisher interaction, whoever is approving the files. Um, audiobook production, because it involves the human voice, can involve human fact, well, like any, any book production involves human factors. Um, but if somebody literally cannot perform because they have a cold, there could be a slowdown. If somebody is traveling and can't review the files, there could be a slowdown. I know any of you who work with book editing or book production or book coaching have experienced this with your authors. So we experience it too in audiobooks. But the general rule of thumb that leaves a nice amount of time for every for all circumstances to be handled is 90 days. Can an audiobook be produced in a much shorter amount of time? Absolutely. But leaving 90 days is a nice amount of time to have flow, to handle people's schedules. And that's really from first meeting to, hey, your book is live on distribution platforms, that time frame. Now, where to distribute your audiobook is an animal that is important because, as you probably already know, it impacts your royalties. There are more than 50 audiobook platforms out there. But, uh, the, of course, we all know the 500 pound gorilla in the room is Audible. They still hold 60% of the market share. So that's just something you need to take into consideration when you're doing your distribution. And um, although you can go, depending on the size of publisher that you are, you can go through Macmillan, you can go through, um, you know, Ingram's uh, sources as well. There's a couple others through major kind of back ends. But for those who are smaller publishers, more self-publishing, there are three different options. One is through acx.com. It stands for Audiobook Creation Exchange, and that is the self-serve backend of Audible Amazon, also iBooks. And the second one is Find Away Voices, which is now owned by Spotify, although they have been around for, I think, over almost 50 years. They, they were, uh, fun fact, um, before they were all digital, one of the ways that Spotify, excuse me, that uh, Find Away Voices got started in the audiobook industry is they created devices of single books that were sent overseas to different military bases so that uh, soldiers and military personnel could have audiobooks to listen to. So a little bit of an origin story there. And the third place that you can get an audiobook, audiobook uh, distributed independently is um, brain, Authors Republic. <laughs> Authors Republic. So Authors Republic uses Findaway's platform, but they have additional platforms that they distribute to as well. So all of these are good. They just have to do with um, which ones you pick and how you use them has to do with strategy. And that strategy has to do with your audiobook royalties. So um, when you go directly through Audible and through ACX and you go exclusive, which is only a 90 day commitment, you can change your mind. It's not hard to change it. Um, you get a 40% royalty. When you change to uh, non-exclusive, you get a 25% royalty. Um, now, 
that 25% royalty is about what you get when you anywhere you go non exclusive you're going to end up with a 20 to 25% royalty. I wish this was higher. Do I think it should be higher? Yes. Are we fighting in the industry to make it higher? Yes. But this is what we're dealing with right now. And unfortunately, it's the way it's been for quite some time. Um, the technology to distribute audiobooks and the weight of the files does, it's a lot more than it is for other formats, sadly. But let's face it, we can do we can do better. So um, I, I was just telling Christopher before our webinar today that I was just on a call a couple of weeks ago with the, the folks on from Audible asking them because they've been promising changes and um, they're kicking the can down the road, but we're still fighting the good fight. It'll happen eventually. Happy to answer more questions about audiobook royalties and how that works as well, because royalties are funky, as you know, they're a bit of an art, they're a bit of a science, so uh, we could do that. You should always be forging a bond between your audiobook and its ink and paper sibling. They should be next to each other in all marketing, on websites, on Audible, on, on uh, Amazon, um, and any book front, storefront that you're on. You always want to, um, in your book matter, note that there is an audiobook version. Um, you always want to try to invite people back to somebody's, you know, website, even fiction, you know, these are things you always want to be making connections between the different versions of the book. We see people buy both the audiobook and the other version of the book all the time, all the time, because sometimes folks want to switch back and forth between devices or modes of listening or reading. Sometimes folks want to take notes, particularly in the case of nonfiction. We see this constantly. Um, I mean, in a world where in fiction, people buy the new version of the book when it changes covers. So, of course, they're going to buy both the audiobook and the paperback version. It's just a, a natural thing. So it's just a matter of making sure those those things are all connected. It's going to touch on production um, and a high level. If there's any nitty gritty questions you have, just let us know and either myself or Steven, because he's had his hands in the production all day, every day, uh, will be happy to answer that. The number one rule of audiobooks is what sells audiobooks is the quality of the narration. Hands down. Absolutely number one thing. Every survey, every research, every piece that gets done, it's the quality of the narration. People follow certain narrators. They will seek out books, just by certain narrators. Narrators have cult followings. Um, and this goes for nonfiction as well when it comes to author narration, which is again one of those things that we specialize in. You know, sometimes an author is going to have a good voice to narrate their own book, sometimes they're not. And we have a process that we go through uh, either with publishers, with the authors to determine how, what what that needs to look like, or if it needs to be a hybrid version where the author still has their voice on the book, maybe at the beginning and the end, which I lovingly call a Tony Robbins sandwich, because that's how Tony Robbins did all of his books, because all of his books are 20 hours long. <laughs> so he did the beginning and end of his books and had a professional narrator do the middle. So we can do that as well. Um, or have the author just do certain things throughout the book, the call out questions in the case of nonfiction is a thing we work on a lot, or we do an interview with the author bonus chapter, which is a great way to make the audiobook unique and distinct from the other versions of the book. And that's about a five question interview, think similar to a uh, book club conversation, but in audio, where the author gets to share more about why they created the book or some extra things they want people to know. Fantastic way for fiction or nonfiction for an author to get their voice onto the book. Now, in the case of fiction, do we ever want an author to narrate their own book? No, we do not. Um, there is 1% of the population that is going to go, be the exception to the rule. People who are bona fide actors who have the background to do it. But narrating an audiobook in fiction, keeping track of the characters, the consistency of the voices, the shading of the voice between different characters, that is a skill set that takes a fair amount of time and energy to master. And it takes a tremendous amount of time to annotate uh, a book to do that kind of work, even to make sure that those characters are consistent over time, to be able to do dialogue, all of those things. 
So 99% of the time, an author should not narrate a fiction audiobook. Moving into marketing. Okay, this is what we forget. And uh, for anyone who works with authors, or maybe you've experienced this as an author yourself, um, your audiobook is an evergreen marketing asset. However, we get tired of talking about our own work. So we have to constantly find ways to renew ourselves, to go back and continue to market our work. Um, and one of the examples I like to use on this is the case of Stephen Covey and the seven habits of highly successful people, because if he hadn't been willing to repeat those seven habits tens of thousands of times, he never would have had that book would is still showing up on bestseller lists. It's crazy. It's been decades since that book was released and it's still there. But that has a lot to do with the visceral fortitude and willingness of the author and the author's organization to be out there talking about it, talking about it over and over again. That's the case with every single book. And so this audiobook needs to be sliced and diced as many ways as possible to be an evergreen marketing asset. We're definitely going to use this to extend the life of your launch. You're going to be using the audiobook uh, and this you can repurpose even your same marketing materials, images, and things like that to let's say, hey, now we're releasing the audiobook and over time increase that life of your book launch. You're also going to be able to engage different audiences and you know, reach out to specific audiences saying, hey, are you waiting for the audiobook? You know, or do you have somebody in your life who would benefit from an audiobook version of this? Um, it's, it's a noisy world out there. So having new things to have people interact and engage with is really important. And so the audiobook is really good for that because it is a little bit more interactive than a print version. Um, this uh, video, actually this video wrapped, racked up over 150,000 views on Facebook. This was a uh, video trailer. We do not produce video trailers. We have folks that we source out to for this. Okay, let's try that. I'm just going to show you a little bit of the beginning, but this is actually a clip from the audio. This is a very esoteric book. It's a nonfiction book. Um, it is a philosophy book, and he wanted to make it more engaging. Uh, and this is a really beautiful application. Is also People author believe narrated. that truth is out there and that it can be understood at the level of thinking. The common belief is that it's just a matter of gaining knowledge of truth by means of discovery. It is further believed that one can use this knowledge, this thought gained truth, as a means to explain the past and control the future. Since people believe situations I'm just going to skip to the end. Uh, if anyone wants to see the whole thing, they're welcome to, but you can see the end. It does have that call to action to the different platforms. And this is also embedded on the author's website for the book as a display, along with the first 15 minutes um, of that, um, that book. All right. Can you guys still see my, see my presentation? Just double checking. Okay, great. All right. Another thing that you can use, which is easier to get produced and certainly more budget friendly um, and also really helpful are audiograms and if you want to do these yourself you can go to headliner or you can go to audiogram um, getaudiogram.com and you can create these and these are basically audio clips that have been closed captioned and they're put on whatever kind of format you want whatever background you want these were done for michael bungay stanier who is a all kinds of best selling author uh, we've had the pleasure of working with on a couple of his books um, and these are actually samples of interviews that he did that we incorporated into the audiobook version that then got used into his marketing for the book itself so i'll just so you can see how it's you need to make sure you're forming relationships with people who are nothing like you so you can't just be in echo chambers you can't just be listening to people who think the same way you do uh, so these are lovely. These can be embedded into blog posts that are on similar content, and then you can put a call to action to your book, to your audio book uh, underneath them as kind of visual content that is much more interactive. These can be put on social media. These can be embedded into website pages. Um, they can be given to podcast hosts 
who uh, and say, you know, you can put this as clips into the show notes for if you're a guest on podcasts. Very, very handy um, to be able to use as marketing tools. And then there are royalty boosting ways uh, to, to use your audiobook with special programs. If you are going exclusive through Audible, you can use the bounty program and, uh, and certainly the gift code. So the bounty program is basically a URL you're given. There's different code or different URLs for different markets, US, Canada, UK, et cetera. And uh, those URLs um, can be, again, shared out anywhere. And when somebody comes to Audible for that book, if that book, uh, your book, is the one that they get first from Audible, they are new Audible customer, they will get your book for free. However, if they stay an Audible customer for 60 days, Audible rewards you with a $75 bounty for finding them a new customer, which I'm going to go on a limb here and say it's probably more than you would have made from the royalty on that book. So it is a nice way to use it. We actually recommend that folks use their bounty uh, URLs as much as possible in their in their marketing, because if somebody already is an Audible customer and they buy your book, you still get your royalties. You still, you know, you make the royalties from that. It's only for new customers, but it's it's a really nice way to continue to, you know, uh, just add on to your royalties. Um, Audible gift codes are important because Audible has separate reviews, as you probably know, from Amazon, even though you can see both on Audible. Um, but more authentic reviews on Audible, we love to use the gift codes, people you trust, people who you uh, hold in high esteem to download your book, to give an authentic review. Um, reviews are harder to leave on Audible. They, the book has to be purchased or given by a gift code, and you can't leave a review instantaneously. You actually have to, the, the system will detect if somebody has listened to part of the book and you actually have to listen to at least I believe 10 minutes of the book in order to leave a review. So they they do help and they do help with the algorithm and the findability on uh, audible. And then uh, book giveaways and bulk audiobook sales are definitely interesting things. Um, book giveaways you can do with your gift codes. Certainly um, nice way to boost some buzz uh, run run programs run little contests for book giveaways great way to en engage an audience or something to include at a launch party. And bulk audio sa sale, audiobook sales are possible. Um, there's one company that offers them, which is audiobooks.com. And uh, you can set up an account to basically buy audiobook codes in bulk. And this is great to do if you have speaking events or um, let's say you're a children's book author and you want to have a, a and you are able to get the school to purchase books for all the kids or a nonprofit organization that might not have money to pay you as a speaker, but they have money to buy your books. You can have them buy the audiobook version and a hard copy version so people can have both available to them. So that is absolutely possible. And just a couple other things. We've been very happy to work with an incredibly diverse group of uh, authors over the years. And I just want to say one of them, uh, Dr. Ming Wang, you may have seen this movie in theaters earlier this year called Sight. Uh, we produced his audiobook with him a couple of years ago, and he had a, a very specific vision for his audiobook that we were able to bring to life, incorporating uh, audio from interviews and from news clips and things like that seamlessly into the audio. He also wanted it distributed for free, so it is available for free on YouTube, but he used it in his pitch to movie houses and his agents did this, and it was he came back to us and thanked us because the audiobook is one of the things he said fundamentally uh, the the production quality of it allowed them to get this movie greenlit and funded and so we were really happy because it's a powerful story uh, about someone who's having he had the immigrant experience he developed world class technology to save people's sight and you know had this whole healing journey at the same time so powerful stuff and we were really happy to be part of it um, so if you wanted to have a conversation with us about your specific audiobook needs beyond what we have available here today, 
you can just go ahead and go to this uh, link and uh, Stephen, I'm going to have you put it in the chat as well. And you can just book a call with us. That's our favorite way to do things because we want to be in relationship with people. We want to be bring transparency to the conversation. So whether or not you decide to work with us or do audiobooks at all, we want you to have the information so that you can make powerful choices for yourself, for your business, for your books. That's what's really important. Um, now, just to touch on the um, the all important version of the um, oh, thank you, Christopher. I was actually just going to look for that link. I appreciate that. Uh, so Christopher just posted the link specifically to our benefit. And you'll see there we have kind of two different levels of benefit uh, because we work directly with authors uh, and we also work directly with publishers. Um, so relationships, again, are something that are really, really important to us. And we offer specials to all IBPA members at all levels. Um, and that's as simple as uh, making a warm introduction to an author or sending us a book. Um, to be able to, to do that. It's not complicated at all. We try to keep things really simple. And what we have that is fairly unique in the industry is um, my business partner and delightful husband is a data architect and software engineer of 30 years. And so one of the things we've done is to develop a bespoke custom backend to our company that allows us to seamlessly work with publishers. So our publishers that we have relationships with and these are non-exclusive relationships. We don't believe in kind of, sometimes there are outliers and what needs to be done with audiobooks. So each of our um, larger publisher partners who are producing, you know, at least 30, 40 books a year um, at minimum, uh, so that we're able to do about 10, at least 10 audiobooks a year for them, that allows us to have enough volume to create for them their own custom portal where you have your own uh, calculator to do estimates. You can drop projects directly into our system. There are resources for FAQ and training materials. We often, I will have even done uh, sales training and Stephen has done sales training and project management training around audiobooks for team members for other companies because we really want folks, audiobooks to be at the forefront of the industry along with these other versions rather than an afterthought. And particularly in the world of nonfiction, we find that if an author is presented with a package early in the relationship that includes an audiobook, then it changes the dynamic as things go along rather than thinking about it at the end. And it just goes very seamlessly and smoothly. And so we have the ability to work with uh, anybody in the world and basically produce pretty much any kind of, of, of audiobook. So that's a lot of information um, <laughs> by and large. So I am gonna stop my share right here so that we can have a little time for, to make sure we get some Q and A answered. So i um, happy to have those uh, conversations privately with folks or answer questions right now. Yeah, well, thank you so much. That was a lot of amazing information not just about what you all do, but about the industry. So we really appreciate that. And one thing I want to uh, emphasize is you, the members of IBPA get a 10% discount um, off audio production. But then also, if you're part of the publisher partner program, you get a 15% discount. So okay. please check that out. I put the um, link in the chat for you all to learn more. Um, but uh, one thing um, I know that people were asking about was... <laughs> excuse me, the um, uh, various, if somebody's like working from home and there, you all send them equipment, um, they were just wor wondering about like, they don't have a studio audio, you know, That's in right. their home. So how does that work where you all ensure that the quality is good, um, even though they're working from home to record the audio? Yeah, Stephen, you want to talk about that process that we have? Because get it down to a science. Sure, absolutely. So uh, by and large, when our nonfiction authors come to us and they say, hey, I'd really like to record my book, I would generally say 80 to 85 percent of them are able to record at home. And what we do to ensure that they have a quality audio book is we actually start out like this right on Zoom and we have a sound check with them where we say, OK, Let's uh, see your space. What, where do you think you're able to record in? Let's see your microphone. Let's talk about settings and technique and things like that. 
and go through all of that uh, before moving into any sort of official production, because if there's adjustments that need to be made, we want to have that conversation with the author. And it's generally things that they already have around their house. The idea being beyond the microphone, uh, we really don't want them to have to be, go out and buy a whole bunch of stuff that they're never going to use again after this process. So if they need uh, microphone suggestions, Christopher, just to clarify, we're not going to send them the actual microphones, but we will provide them some options that you can you can buy any of them on Amazon yep. and we can walk you through setting those up in the proper technique. And these, you know, anybody, any author or even a publisher really should have some kind of microphone and these microphones are not thousands of dollars. Some of them are barely hundreds of dollars because we do a lot of testing. Everyone on our team has a minimum of 20 years of experience in audio. So, and so these are folks who have had all different kinds of setup, had all different types of equipment. So we really keep on top of things to make sure that we, our options are very, very affordable and very, very accessible for people. And it's really kind of this, what do you need minimally to do this? And this is stuff that voice actors do all the time. Tons of professional voice actors don't have a booth at home. They have certain setups that they use in their walk-in closet or on their desk and things like that. And it's a little bit of a secret in the industry. I once recorded a national commercial from my car. I mean, it's just, it's one of these things so that we've kind of just brought this out into the light so that narrators who are authors who can also benefit from this. And uh, another thing people are wondering about is just like the costs. I don't know if you all yeah. share the costs in sure. general or uh, just. Yeah, we are very, very mid market. Um, you can you can literally produce an audiobook for nothing upfront and do what's called a royalty share with a professional narrator where you're both going in on the risk, but you are tied together in exclusive production um, rights on Audible for seven years. So it's a long time. Um, and you tend to get a narrators who are less experienced. So those are the two pitfalls of, of royalty share is finding a high quality narrator and also being tied into a seven year contract. Um, but certain circumstances, it can work. Um, on the other end of things is going directly to, a, you know, Blackstone, a, you know, really big, big, big recording studio. The quotes you're going to get there are going to be eight, ten, twelve thousand dollars for an audiobook. We're much less than that. We tend to run um, somewhere between three to five k for all in everything for a really, really long book. We might go and get into six uh, if it's extremely long, but the vast majority of our books range in that three to three to five k range. And again, that's retail to the author when we're when working directly with an author, no discount uh, with our publishers, of course, that gets pared back considerably. But in terms of if anyone is a, say, a hybrid publisher and they're passing the cost on to the author, we've had nobody have any issues uh, doing that with authors. For those who are in traditional publishing, it still turns out to be very close to the industry standard of about 500 to 550 dollars per finished hour a finished hour being about nine or ten thousand words so we're extremely mid-market and you all give the files then to the author or the publisher and then it's up to them where they want to distribute it right no we actually educate people on their distribution options and then we do it for them so we handle the troubleshooting we hand we are fully responsible for making sure those audiobook files go live so some of our publishers want to do that themselves, and we there's sometimes training involved in that that we'll do for them, and sometimes we're handling it for them. But we're in our partnerships, we're responsible for making sure those audiobooks come off without a hitch. Oh, okay. Okay. And great. Kind of take that uh, thought one step further. When we say we're doing it for them, we're helping them, the authors, create their own accounts. We are not managing it for them. Mm -hmm. They're always going to know their sales numbers and things like that. We're not hiding anything from them from a transparency standpoint. It's their account. The royalties go straight to them. We yeah. don't uh, have our hands in any of that part. Yeah, we don't take any rights or royalties. And when we're if we're managing accounts for our publishers, we're either delivering the files, finished files to them in a format, say, you know, Macmillan is different than, you know, uh, ACX, certainly. But some of our publishers want to handle that themselves, the final uploads and all of that, and some want us to do it for them. We're flexible. 
Awesome. Thank you. And then some uh, publishers are wondering if they have authors, can they just send their authors to you all yep. to kind of just work with them um, so that the, the publisher is not the middle person? How does that work? Yeah, for sure. Um, so in, in either case, whether they want us, it's the difference between a dedicated partnership with a publisher and uh, a referral partner is really who's making the sale. <laughs> it's really what it comes down to. So some of our publishers that are larger and they have book packages that they're selling to authors, we're acting as not quite white label, but basically the audiobook division of their company. Um, so we maintain our own identity as Twin Flame Studios, but it's a seamless process all the way through. And they're handling the contract and the sale with the author if it's you know most of the time a hybrid or self-publishing situation. If it's a referral situation and they say, hey, so-and-so meet so-and-so, you're going to be, we recommend you for audiobooks, then we just nurture the author and keep the book coach, uh, editor, publisher in the loop as to what's going on and how things are going. And people are wondering, you talked a lot about fiction for a author uh, narrating the book um, and the pros and Non-fiction. But yeah. Oh, well, they're wondering, actually, nonfiction, what will be the pros and cons of an author reading their nonfiction book um, as compared to because you, you were saying don't do it at all if you're basically a fiction author. But if Correct. you're a nonfiction author, why would they want to do it versus why they would not want to do it? Oh, um, I'll cover a couple of these. And then, Stephen, if you have any you want to add on, we'll do that. So a lot of our authors are, you know, building a brand, building a platform, and they want their voice on their book. Um, so if they're teaching or they're, you know, they really want to be the voice of that book as part of their brand. So that's important to them. Um, another big reason is, again, if they're, they are going to be speaking a lot, I did say that we do see people getting booked, even if it is professionally narrated, but a lot of folks don't want to leave that to chance. Certainly, um, and I think that also there is a um, you know a certain kind of cachet if you are a nonfiction author and it is your story. We hear this a lot. Uh, if it's a memoir, things like that, people want to make sure the story is told a certain way. And when you work with a professional narrator, even if you're aligning expectations and you have a narrator that you really love they're not going to read every word the way you would. And you have to let go of some of that creative control. Um, otherwise, you're going to end up nitpicking word by word. And that's just not the way that audiobooks work. You have to allow the narrator to, to act it in the way that is authentic to them. And that's why the audition process is so important. Anything you want to add to that, Stephen? Just want to double check. Yeah, I would just say in terms of whether or not to do it, a lot of times authors need to check their own calendars. You know, we are very busy people. Um, you might be planning a launch party or you might be um, traveling for speaking events or what have you. And you may just not actually have the time to record the audiobook in an efficient way. So sometimes a, a narrator can help alleviate that in a way that you can still go do all of your other engagements, meetings, other work commitments while the audiobook is being created and then just have it done for you. And you still get to be part of the review process. Absolutely. Uh, but in terms of your time commitment, um, it's uh, greatly lessened when you choose a narrator. So just kind of yeah. be mindful of your schedule too when you're thinking about, do I want to do this or not? Mm. Yeah. And some people just are not suited to it if you're not going to enjoy it or you've got any kind of physical restriction or, or you know, um, we've worked with everybody. We've worked with folks who are visually impaired, folks who are, um, you know, have learning disability, folks who have uh, physical disability, like all kinds of things, F folks from crazy time zones and all of that. We always find a solution that works, whether that is doing a combo, like I said, a hybrid, um, what in mostly I said in nonfiction, um, or or the um, interview with the author chapter if they still want their voice on the book but they don't want to do the whole thing. Thank you. Well, this has been very informative. I really appreciate y'all sharing all of your knowledge about this. Uh, I recommend anybody listening to this. Uh, they definitely should recommend uh, going out to you all, reaching out to you directly, have a conversation with the uh, Twin Filling Studios team. 
um, because you all can help if you are in any way like, I don't know if I can do this, I can afford it, whatever. Just talk to them first and figure out, um, you know, if it's a good option for you. Um, and we are very grateful for the benefit you give to our members. Um, I know, again, you all put a lot of work in. So having a discount, um, you know, off of your work, uh, we really appreciate that. Um, so um, thank you again, uh, Tina, Stephen, we really appreciate it. And um, we will absolutely, um, you know, continue to get the word out about this benefit. Um, so thanks, everybody, for listening. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you having us here. Very cool to be here. Thank you all.